People who work for airlines, what are secrets passengers don't know? Flight attendants, pilots, or engineers, what are secrets that passengers don't know when you ride on planes or things you can get for free from the cabin or crew? Some airlines don't pay pilots or flight attendants for flights that cancel. Which doesn't sound so bad until you start thinking about the safety implications of it. A little short on the rent this month. Then I don't see that hydraulic leak. I can't afford to have the flight cancel. Child needs to see the doctor. Maybe I don't report the torn up carpet that you might trip on in an evacuation. Because carpet takes too long to replace. So the flight would cancel. Not saying this happens all the time. Because most crews are true professionals. And can put their job ahead of their paycheck. But it happens enough to give you the goose bumps. Throw in some seriously low pay, sub $20,000 a year for many first year pilots, and you've got a subtle incentive to overlook safety issues. $20,000 a year starting? My god I pull in twice that, and I'm an unskilled laborer. You are able to unlock airplane lavatories from the outside. There is usually a lock mechanism concealed behind the no smoking badge on the door. Just lift the flap up, and slide the bolt to unlock. Now I can open the door on people shutting in a stool smaller than a phone booth while I'm surrounded by people. Thanks, guy. Or snap a photo of Billy Idol initiating someone into the Mile High Club. Bring an unopened bag of or box of chocolates for the flight crew, especially long flights. They'll treat you like a king for the whole flight. Chocolate is like catnip for people. So, food. How does one execute this chocolate handoff? Like, when you first board. I've never bribed anyone. There's always at least one at the front of the plane to greet you. Hand them the chocolates and say, this is a long flight, you're going to need something to stay sweet. Boom. Their panties are wet, and so is your scotch glass. Definitely trying this for my flight tomorrow. Edit. Boarding now. I'll update again when I land. Edit 2. Landed. I gave the person in the front a box of assorted chocolates. Keep in mind that this plane was not full. Before we took off I was approached by one of the attendants, and they said there were some empty first class seats, and they upgraded me for free. I was offered to complimentary glasses of wine, and was checked up on probably 10 times. TLDR. It worked. My sister is a flight attendant, she says after she tells everyone to turn off all electronics, she goes to the back, and pulls out her phone and starts texting. Electronics do absolutely nothing to a plane. Your phone or iPad or laptop isn't going to make the plane magically drop out of the sky. It's not going to suddenly make the navigation system go offline. Planes have triple redundancy in every system. Also all of the sensitive electronics are so heavily shielded against the radiation that the atmosphere produces, which is several factors stronger than your iPhone, so you don't have to worry. Source, I'm an aerospace engineer, and also the arsehole that texts from 35,000 feet. But, what network is up there? Skynet. I used to be an aircraft mechanic. You'd be amazed at what you don't really need to make a plane fly. Example. Pilots. Basically, most systems are redundant. Radio is out. Cool you have another one. Depending on the aircraft and flight characteristics, radar doesn't even have to work. I doubt that any airline could put one in the air without radar, but it's possible in some cases. We used to let planes fly without non-essential instrumentation or secondary nav systems all the time. We'll probably get buried, but I'm an aircraft fueler. One thing I cannot stress enough is how your pets are treated. While your airline will take the best possible actions, some things cannot be avoided, like the noise on the ramp. I cannot stand out there without ear protection, and imagine your pet sitting out there on the ramp waiting to be loaded onto the plane being exposed to the same amount of noise I am. Please people, think twice before flying your pets. I flew my two cats, two hours north, so it wasn't a long flight, and they were petrified both before and after the flight, I felt like such a bastard. They didn't come out from under the couch for at least a week, they even ate down there, and were so scared they were trembling the whole time. I'll never fly a pet again after that, I had no idea it would be that traumatic for them. Aerospace fastener production here. Nobody ever asks what is actually holding the plane together. Don't worry about it. Duct tape and good wishes. 
went skydiving once, and the plane wings had duct tape and electrical tape everywhere, inside holding the upholstery on too. The pilot was pretty cool, we were chatting about it later. After we got in the air he saw a lot of people pointing to the tape and made an announcement over the headphones that he's the only one allowed to worry about the duct tape because he's the only one without a parachute. Fun fact, the plane crashed a few weeks later and there were some fatalities. I was a ramp agent for Delta. A lot of freight gets shipped on commercial flights. One of these items were always called a jar on the radios. A jar was an abbreviation for human remains. Some people die far away from where they want to get buried. They are packed in wood framed boxes, so you would never know what was inside, except by the strange shape of them. They were a bitch to handle. People wait a bit. Add a casket and shipping container and you're looking at anywhere from 250 to 400 pounds. Also, the bin doors tend to be pretty narrow. Wrestling these things out of the plane was always a giant pain in the ass. A jar in the middle bin of Madog, MD-90, duck that, TLDR. If you hear about an A jar while flying Delta, it means there's a dead body in cargo. When a plane is landing at night, they dim the interior lights in case you need to evacuate upon landing. Your eyes are already adjusted to the darkness, so you'll be able to see better once outside the plane. I always thought it was so you'd fall asleep just as the ground violently comes up to meet you. If you give us flight attendants your magazines, we will love you. Is guns and ammo okay? Give those to the air marshals. You can find them by looking for the guy reading SWAT magazine and wearing sunglasses in economy. Today I learned I'm an air marshal. Passenger weighing in. If you have a musical instrument never check it. Take it to the gate with you. If they don't have room on the plane they can gate check it and put it on last. When you deboard on your next stop it will be waiting for you as soon as you exit the plane. You can bring mini bottles of liquor fruit sap. If you want to save some dough but still booze a mile high, bring a few along. I miss the days of being able to bring handles of booze through security. Thanks Bin Laden. Thanks Osama. Posted this in a similar thread a while back. I have a friend who's a commercial pilot. Around 5 years ago he was doing a flight from LA to Tokyo when an anonymous caller phoned in a bomb threat while they were over the middle of the Pacific. Apparently they have procedures for this kind of thing, but there was nothing anyone could do in this situation except stay calm and not alert the passengers, obviously. He said for the rest of the flight every bump of turbulence made his adrenaline spike. They took this case especially seriously because there was a group of foreign dignitaries sitting in the first class cabin. In situations like this, they radio back and everyone on board gets their name cross-checked for links to terrorism and prior convictions. It comes back as a high level, medium or no threat. Source, friend's dad is a pilot. My dad's been an airline pilot for almost 20 years, and apparently planes get struck by lightning all the time. Also if a passenger is causing a scene in the jetway he can refuse to let them on and take off without them. This will get buried, but there are cracks all over the turbine blades. Crack growth is a pretty well characterized science, and part of the point of inspections every X flights is to make sure the cracks haven't grown to a point where they are actually concerning. They'll take a look at them, measure them, and if they think they still have say, 2000 hours until failure, they'll send the plane back out and check it in a few hundred hours of use. Not airline secret but airport. You know that first class line at security? Yeah, that's an airline thing not sad. Economy passenger, if sad doesn't care. Step right up. Damn I hope this is true, because I don't want to go into that line only to be turned away and have to do a walk of shame to join the proletariat in the line of underachievers. The air inside the jet engine of an airplane is hotter than the melting point of any component of the engine. But thankfully due to amazing engineering the components themselves don't get to that temperature. Women, if you pack a toy in your bag, take the batteries out. Because if I'm loading your bag and I hear it vibrating I have to tell my lead. Then my lead has to come pull you off the aircraft and you have to open your bag and turn off your toy in front of a bunch of giggling grown ass men. I don't work anywhere near airplanes, but I read a lot. I recently read a book with this interesting tidbit. The stewardess's job is not to fetch you drinks or a blanket. It's to keep the passengers safe. 
In addition to emergency procedures, they are trained to size up every passenger that comes aboard for signs of trouble or in case they need to recruit help in an emergency. If you are a fit male passenger, the stewardess has memorized where you are sitting. Your bags are thrown and dropped very frequently. Then they are put in tiny cargo compartments where 50 to 150 other bags are set on top of them. Then they slide around until you land. Then they are dropped and thrown and finally, you retrieve them. This is no secret. Seriously. You can see it from the terminal.